All right, you're good to go. So should I start now or do we want to wait a little bit? You can start and just introduce yourself if you want to wait a couple minutes for people to get into the class. Okay. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining today. I'm super excited. Um, my name is Katie Kapke, and I'm a self-taught artist uh, living in Sacramento, California. I also lived in San Francisco for about six years. And um, I mainly do abstract paintings, and I also do illustration work and um, do surface pattern design. Um, so I have abstracts and I have some illustrations I do. But today we're gonna to be working on an abstract. Um, my work is very colorful and playful and fun and free. And my kind of philosophy with art is to also be free and not stress it too much. Um, I started painting in my 30s, I'm in my 40s now. And um, I stopped for about two years when um, I was working and it just got a little overwhelming and I was miserable. So I decided to do a paint every day for a year project um, so that I could get back into the habit. And I did that. And then I also did two 100 day projects and all of those together kind of launched my career. And I also got into the habit of having a daily art practice. And um, I'll talk about this throughout the class too a little bit, but that's the way I approach art is to not get ca caught up in having a blank canvas or a blank piece of paper and getting stressed out. It's kind of narrowing your options. Uh, so you don't have as many things to choose from that gets overwhelming and to just have fun with it and to use, I found it really helpful to use materials that aren't as expensive for canvas and paper sometimes. So I use my sketchbook a lot. Uh, so I don't stress out about it being perfect because it's not gonna be perfect. And you also have to be okay with things not turning out the way you want them to because every artist, no matter how accomplished and amazing they are, make bad paintings. Everybody makes bad paintings. <laughs> it's just a part of being an artist. Um, so let's see, I ho hopefully everyone's here. I um, am going to talk about Pride a little bit, the history of Pride. So Pride started because of a riot and at, this, at Stonewall where um, several LGBTQ AI people were arrested publicly and beaten. And so that started a riot that lasted five days. And some of the gay activists decided to start a march um, in remembrance a year after that happened. And then that turned into June Pride and Pride celebrations all over the world throughout June. So um, a lot of people think that Pride is just a parade, but really Pride is a march. Um, and there are several, several smaller marches that take place besides main um, gay parades. There are, um, are trans marches and dyke marches that happen. Um, and the, there's also, there's so many things. There's art shows showing queer um, arts and craftsmen. There's um, a lot of queer small businesses that are promoted. So it's basically celebrating the queer community, everything they've accomplished, um, supporting small businesses and queer artists and artisans, and then also the ongoing pursuit of justice and equality for the LGBTQAI community. So um, that's a little bit about Pride. Um, prior to the creation of the rainbow flag, because today we're going to be working on a piece inspired by the Pride rainbow 
flag colors. So prior to that being created in, I think it was like 70, 78, yeah. So Gilbert Baker created the rainbow flag. So prior to that, the main symbol for the LGBTQAI community was the pink triangle and the pink triangle came from being on the uniforms of suspected homos homosexuals at the con Nazi concentration camps. So we retook that symbol and repurposed it and took it as our own, but they wanted there to be another symbol that more encompassed the community. So they came up with the rainbow because it's one of the oldest symbols of hope. And that's what they really wanted to represent uh, the LGBTQ AI community. And then originally there were eight colors. There are six colors now. There's actually more than six because there's some updated flags that are more than just the six colors. They include the trans flag colors, BIPOC colors, and the intersect symbol. But the eight colors were narrowed down to six colors because of production costs. But the original colors were pink, red, orange, yellow, green, turquoise, blue, and purple. And then it got narrowed down to red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Um, and that was mainly a cost thing. But today I'm using pink to represent red and also because pale pink and pale blue, which we're also using, and white represent the trans flag. So I have white in here. Um, we kind of incorporate both the main rainbow flag and the trans flag all together. And I used more muted tinted pale colors um, just to make it easier to work with. The original bright flag colors are very, very bright and a little bit difficult to mix and work with. Um, so that's why I decided to mute those down a little bit. And then here's where you can fall find me. Um, you can follow me and I want everybody to share their projects afterwards and tag me and make sure you tag Michael's with Make It With Michael's or Michael's classes when you post because either Michael's or myself can highlight your work and I really want to see what everybody makes. Um, so let's see. I'm going to talk a little bit the, about the supplies really quick. So you have a paper palette, it's disposable. You don't have to use this. You can use whatever you have to use as a palette, plastic, glass, whatever. Um, I have a jar of water. So any jar of water to clean your brushes. Um, I have some paper towels to wipe off my palette knives. And the brush set I recommended uh, that set because it has basically every kind of brush you could need. And it also included palette knives. And we're gonna be using palette knives for our color mixing. And I prefer to use palette knives over brushes for color mixing because a lot of the color can get stuck in the brush. And so you waste some of the color. If you don't have palette knives, brush works fine. Don't worry about it. So all the way through this, use what you have and improvise. It does not have to be exactly these things. Um, I also included a set of filbert brushes uh, because I love the shape of these and they're just really fun for mark making. If you don't have them, it's totally fine. Um, the colors we're gonna be using today are Cad Free Yellow Deep from Liquitex. If you don't have this particular brand, it's fine. You can use any deep yellow. If you don't have deep yellow, you can use regular yellow. Um, golden yellow ochre. If you don't have this, you can use, you can add some burnt sienna to your yellow. You can add raw sienna. You can add a little bit of brown. Um, you don't have to have these exact colors, you can still mix. Uh, the other color we're using is 
phthalo cyanine blue green shade. If you don't have the green shade, you can use whatever shade you have. Um, if you have any kind of deep blue, that will work. It just not, might not be exactly the same and that's fine. We're gonna be mixing these all with white, tinting them so that they're more pale pastel-y colors. Um, we're gonna be using Liquitex Brilliant Purple. And if you don't have this, you can use a deep purple. We're gonna be adding white to this anyway. It just makes it easier. But if you have deep purple, you can achieve the same effect with just adding more white to it and using less of the deeper color. We're also gonna be using Liquitex Sap Green Permanent and Thalo Green Blue Shade from Golden. If you don't have these, you can use whatever green you have. It's fine. Um, I'm adding the sap green to add a little bit um, of a brown color to the green to tone it down a little bit. So if you don't have sap green, you can use a raw sienna, a burnt sienna, a burnt umber, any kind of brown color to get the same effect. Um, we're gonna be using cad free orange. And any orange will do, this one's Liquitex. We're going to be using titanium white, a lot of this. This is Liquitex, you can use any titanium white. Um, if you don't have titanium white and you have like mixing white, it won't work as well because uh, mixing white is meant to mix the colors, not tint the colors. So it's not gonna have as strong of a effect. You can still use it, it'll be fine. Your colors just might not be quite as pale. And then we're gonna be using a little bit of Winsor Newton Permanent Rose, just a little. Um, this is gonna be our pink. If you don't have this one, any kind of magenta or deep magenta will work. Um, even a red or crimson, you can lighten to a pink. Um, like I said, we're adding white to everything. So it's pretty flexible in your colors. And then we're gonna be using some Posca pens. These are my favorite paint pens. They are really opaque. They work really well. They have a million different colors. And today I'm using white and pink. And then I recommended this set of oil pastels. It's a great starter set. If you have any kind of oil pastels, you can use those. I'm using a white, a pink, a purple, and a yellow from this set. You can use whatever colors you want to. Um, really feel free to experiment and have fun and use what you have. Don't get hung up on having the exact supplies. It's not important. The point is to have fun and play and use what you have. And that's a big part of my art philosophy too, is to just use what you have. Um, you won't need a hair dryer. This is acrylic paint. So it dries really, really fast, which is great. And one of the reasons I love it, since it dries really fast, um, we will be mixing as we go. Sorry, that's my dog. <laughs> um, and sorry. <laughs> Come on, keep quiet. Decided, decided he wanted to play. Um, so what was I saying? Oh, we're gonna be mixing as we go on our palette paper. So if you want to save your paint so it doesn't dry out, you can put it in Tupperware and that will keep it airtight. And so you can use it later and it won't dry out. So if you don't wanna waste any paint, you can do that. So, okay, I think that's it. Does anyone have any questions before we get started? I think we're Oh, and I forgot to, to mention the final fixative. This is to seal your oil pastels. And we won't use this in the class, you'll use it afterwards to seal your pastels because if you don't seal them, they will smear. So also when you're using your pastels, be sure not to like rub your palm or any part of your hand through the pastel part. Okay.
Are you guys ready to get started? <laughs> this is the color palette we're using. And I start all of my paintings with a color palette. It's the fastest, easiest way for me to get started. I love color and I love limiting my color palette. Um, so when I approach a sketchbook painting or any kind of painting, I start off with a limited color palette. Um, I find it really helps me just get started and not stress about what I'm using. I also love making color palettes and swatching out color. So I'll do that for hours and make up different color, color palettes so that when I go to sit down and make art, I have color palettes to choose from. So this is our basic color palette. And this is the final piece. And it does not have to be exactly like this. You're gonna improvise, you're gonna play, have fun, and um, not worry about copying this exactly. I'm not even gonna copy this exactly. So, but this is the inspiration for the piece. So we're gonna take one of the canvases that was in the set I recommended. And I recommended that set because it's really affordable. You don't have to stress about it's great quality and affordable. And you get like seven canvases, canvases in a pack, I think. Yeah. So actually I'm gonna move this over so you can see me mixing paint. Cause we're gonna start off mixing the pink, the order that I did it in the piece. Um, the pink, the orange, the yellow, green, blue, purple is also, the pink is representative of red. So this is also the order that it is in the flag. So that's how I kind of took inspiration from that. And we're gonna just move from the left to the right. So we're gonna start with the pink. So for that, you're gonna take a little bit of permanent rose or magenta, any deep pink color you have. And then you're gonna add probably twice as much white. And then we're gonna mix that. I think it needs a little bit more pink. And this does not have to be exact. Like, and if you make a color you like better than what I'm doing, use, you know, use that color. It doesn't have to be exactly my color. Color mixing is really fun. And playing with color mixing, you can discover a lot of different colors. Let's see. I think I still need just a little bit more pink. Now I need a little bit more white. Like I said, it's not an exact science. There, I think that's good. And then I usually use another palette knife to scrape off the palette knife with paint on it. And then I just use a paper towel to wipe off my palette knife. Okay. And then I'm going to start with a flat brush. You can use any flat brush you want. I'm gonna use this one. Oops, sorry. It is a three, four from the set that we used, but you can use any, you can use this size. Any flat brush will work. 
And we're gonna start in the corner, the left corner. And this is very loose and free. You won't mess it up. If you make a mistake, just make it part of your painting. This does not have to be exact. I like to kind of step down my color. It, this is basically like color blocking, blocking in color. I like to kind of step it down, vary the width. And for this demonstration, I'm not gonna be painting the edges, but if you want to, you can paint the edges. I did that in my original piece, but you can also just leave the edges and paint them white if you want to. And some people don't finish their edges at all and they just leave them. And then you can also frame your piece and then the edges don't show. So it's really up to you. There's no, there's really no right or wrong way to do things. And I forgot to mention, I'm, I'm using all heavy bodied acrylics in this. If you have fluid acrylics, you could use that too, those work. Um, I just really love the thickness of the heavy bodies. Um, and if you wanna mix a little bit of water, if it's too thick for you, you can add a little bit of water um, just don't add too much because if the ratio of water is too high, the pigment can fall off of the canvas. But you, you can use a little bit of water or acrylic medium to thin it out if you find that it's too thick for your liking. Not, all, not everybody likes the thick paint. I just, I, I use a lot of thick paint in my painting. It's my, I like it, it's my thing. I love how creamy they are. Okay, I think that's good for the pink. So I'm gonna rinse out my brush. And then we are going to mix up this orange. So for the orange, we're going to use the cat free orange or any orange that you have. A little bit of that, it's pretty strong. And then a little bit of white, not quite as much white with this one, because we're just gonna lower it a little bit, tint it a little bit. I think I can use just a tiny bit more orange. Just mix these colors to your liking. Like I said, it doesn't have to be exact. There we go. So I'm just wiping off my palette knife. And then we will paint in the orange section. If you guys have questions while I'm doing this, feel free to ask in the chat. They're watching the chat for questions. Okay. So I'm gonna use the same brush and what I do with my rinsed brush is I dry it off um, in the paper towel a little bit so it's not too wet just because I don't like watering down my paint very much. But if you like watering down your paint, it's fine. Then you don't really need to dry it. Okay, and we're just gonna start blocking in the orange next to the pink.
and you can make any shapes you want. I just usually make blocks of color. My work is very graphic. You can also blend the colors more if you like that. And here I'll give you a reference of kind of what the orange looks like on the original piece that we're using as inspiration. I also like the way orange and pink looks together. And we're gonna be using, um, don't worry if you have extra paint, we're gonna be using some of these colors at the very end as brush strokes too. And then, like I said, you can Tupperware your color if you want to. Save it. And just remember, this doesn't have to be perfect. This is abstract and it's fun and it's meant to be stress-free and relaxing and kind of meditative. Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna rinse out my brush. And then we are going to mix the next color, which is yellow. So again, this is kind of the order they go in in the flag. It goes red, orange, yellow, and we're using pink instead of red. This is the yellow. So to mix this yellow, we're going to use a bit of the CAD free yellow deep. And like I said, if you don't have this particular yellow, you can use whatever yellow you have. Um, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow ochre to it. If you don't have yellow ochre, you can use a little, raw sienna is almost the same color. You could use a little brown. It's just muting the tone a little bit. And then I'm gonna add a little white. So if you have a darker brown, just use a tiny bit of the darker brown. And there was a little pink in there because there was some on my tube. <laughs> and this is a little too pale. So I'm gonna add more yellow deep. Also an alternative to yellow deep is like a, um, a yellow orange. And mixing color is really fun. It's really fun pushing the paint around. It's very relaxing. And I don't know, I think it needs to be just a little bit brighter. 
I should have upped my ratio of yellow. And palette paper is great because it's disposable, so it's very easy cleanup. Just scraping off my palette knife. And then I'm gonna wipe it with the paper towel. And we're going to paint the yellow section. So here's the yellow that I did. So it's kind of longer and more on the side. Like I said, it does not have to follow this exactly. So I'm going to dry my brush, soak up some of that water. Start with the yellow. And if you want to make a more perfect line, you can use the tip of your brush like this, like I'm doing here. But it really doesn't have to be perfect. This isn't about anything being perfect. My dogs are snoring now, very tired from barking earlier. And like I said, if you're having trouble with how thick the paint is, you can water it down a little bit. But that makes it easier for you to work with. It's really personal preference. You can see I'm not finishing my edges where I know it's gonna hit another color perfectly because um, you know I'm gonna go over it with another color so it doesn't matter. There, I think that's good for the yellow. Just a little. I'm gonna rinse off my brush. And we're gonna mix the green. Which this is what the green looks like in the painting, if you wanted to see. And this is the green color, just kind of a muted tinted green. So we're going to take a little of that yellow 
green blue shade. And like I said, you can use any green, the tint will just be slightly different. And a little bit of the sap green, just a tiny bit. And if you don't have sap green, like I said, you could add a little raw sienna um, or a little tiny bit of brown. And then some white. There's a little more white than green. And mix that up. And I kind of always have my color palette by for reference of the color I'm aiming at, but I don't stress about it if it's not perfectly the same color. I'm not really about perfection. I think I might have added just a tiny bit in white. Maybe just a tiny bit of Oh, aloe blue, green shade, I mean green blue shade. I'm gonna scrape off my palette knife. That looks good. And then wipe it off with a paper towel. And then the green in. And the green kind of goes along the bottom and then comes up roughly. Not important, but it's perfectly like that. I think I'm gonna use a smaller brush. This is a half flat brush. Any flat brush will do. This one's a six, it's very similar. Your colors might mix a little as they're a little wet, and that's fine. If you like blending them, you can do that. I'm making sure not to go too thick with the paint so it doesn't take longer to dry because we are going to be going over this with pens and pastel soon. But if you have some thick paint, it's no big deal. You can wipe it with your brush or you can just leave it to dry longer. And I'm just kind of making an outline right now to where I want the green to go.
there. I think that's good. Smooth it out a little bit. And then I'm going to rinse off my brush. And the next color we're going to make is pale blue. That's right here too, you can see. So we're going to take that really difficult to pronunciate blue, follow cyanine, I think that's how you say it, but any deep blue would work. A little bit of that. And a good amount of white. And when you add white to colors, it's called tinting. And if you add black, um, now I'm going to forget what it's called. Uh, this needs a little more white. Tiny bit more white. Looks good. It looks like there's a little glare on the screen. Let's see if I can fix that. Okay, so I'm going to scrape off my palette knife. Wipe it off with a paper towel. And we're going to paint the blue. And the blue is just kind of here in the corner. I'm going to use that smaller brush again, dry it off. As I'm going, let me know if there's something you can't see.
great thing about acrylic drying fast is that you can sit down and paint for not that long and finish a painting. Hey, Katie, we got a good question in the chat. Sure. How do you choose your color palettes? Um, I get a lot of inspiration from nature. I take my dogs on two long walks a day and I take a lot of pictures of flowers and leaves and things like that that I find inspirational. And I use that. I find color palettes from pictures on Pinterest. And I just try to match those, any kind of, you know, picture where the color grabs my eye. And then sometimes I'll add a color that's not there for contrast um, because a lot of the pictures on Pinterest don't have a ton of contrast. So if you wanna add that, you just add a darker color. Um, yeah, and then I just mix up the colors, kind of inspired by that photograph or flower. Um, and I paint from there. But definitely photography, colors and photography inspire me a lot, but I take a lot of my own photos on walks and stuff. Nature probably inspires me the most. Sometimes I'll find like weird mushrooms and things like that, pictures of them online. And the colors are just amazing. The colors in nature are amazing. Okay, we're down to the last little part, which is the purple. And here it is right here. So we're gonna add some of this brilliant purple. That's a really good question though. And then not too much white on this one because it's already kind of pastel. And a little more purple. I also just need a little bit more of this color because I'm gonna make some brush strokes with it. I think I just want a little bit more purple. That looks good. Wipe off my palette knife, paper towel. Paint this last little section. Draw off my brush. I love this purple color, it's really pretty. But yeah, if you ever have a color palette that looks too much the same, 
needs, it means you need more contrast and you need to add a darker color. I use Payne's Gray a lot. It's a really good deep contrast color. It's one of my favorite colors um, to add contrast, but yeah, it just means you need a deeper color for some contrast because a lot of um, palettes of similar colors look really pretty, but you really need that pop of contrast for the colors to really sing. And here you've got kind of the deeper purple, blue, and green. I'm just kind of thinning out the paint so it dries since this, this is the last color. I don't want it to be too thick. You can kind of see in spots where the canvas pokes through a little white. You can cover those up if you want to. I'm not going to so that it can show you the pens and everything on top of the dried paint, but if it bothers you, you can just add another little coat in those areas. I'm going to rinse off my brush. Okay. So here in, let me scoot this over, in the project, um, I use Posca pens here and then pastel here. And then I make brush strokes over them. So when working with oil pastels, um, you kind of want to use them last except for the paint can go on top of them, but you want to use the paint pens first because you can draw oil pastel over the paint pens, but not as easily um, paint, like you'll, you'll mess up the tip of your brush or of your pen if you try to go over the oil pastel. So I'm using white and pink and you can see in the project, I used some rainbows, rainbow inspired um, dots, line work. I like graphic stuff. I use a ton of rainbows in my work um, for the symbolism uh, for the queer community a lot, but you can make them into like arches. You can do all different sorts of things. I do squiggly lines like all over. Um, and then right here, I use pink triangles to represent that symbol. And so I'm gonna start with the white. I'm just gonna do and these pens are great. They work great over acrylic paint. They're really opaque. And I like to make uneven lines so, in 
groups of three or five or seven. I don't like doing even numbers. I like keeping it odd numbers. Mm -hmm. Just gonna do some line work. You can make any kind of marks you want to. It's a really fun experiment to just take a bunch of scratch paper and take your pens, your pencils, your oil pastels, your paint brushes, and make a bunch of different marks and see the kind of marks you can make with different tools. You can also use like things in nature, leaves, vegetables. I mean, you can make marks with anything. And it's so much fun to just, you wanna shake these pens, I forgot to say that. You wanna shake them before you use them. Um, it's so much fun to just like make marks and see what is possible and what you like and what you don't like. So then when you sit down to paint, you have kind of have a toolbox to go from. Still a little wet, so I'm gonna leave that for a second. Let's try. So now I'm gonna use the pink Tosca pen to make some little upside down triangles for that symbol. And I am just going to stagger them. I don't like overly plan this stuff out. I'm just like, I know I wanna make uneven staggered pattern. And I know I want it in this general area. My painting style is improv, you know, improvisation and seeing what happens. Okay. So now I'm gonna take some of the oil pastels and these are the colors that I'm choosing to use. There's a darker purple, a white, a pink, and a yellow, a deep yellow. Like I said, you can use any colors you want. And I am just going to make some uneven marks. I'm gonna make a little rainbow over here, with the yellow, a little rainbow over here. Oh no, I just put my arm in my paint. It happens. That's what paper towels are for. Okay. This purple paint is still a little wet, so I'm being delicate with that. And then I'm going to take the pink and make some little hill marks. And then go over it with the purple. And like I said, make any marks you want to. Just play and have fun. And we're going to make the final brush strokes. And Oh, I think this is drying up now. I can make my little brush marks. So I am going to use the Filbert two size. 
and some of the orange paint that we mixed up. And I'm just gonna take my brush and I'm gonna press it with the paint on it in and make a mark that way. And it makes a really fun little mark. And I'm just gonna make an uneven pattern. And like I said, you can play with your brushes and see what different kinds of marks you can make. You don't have to make the same marks as me. I am going to take the filbert number one. It's the smallest one. And I'm going to use the pink to make similar marks. And I'm just going to make a little pattern. You can make this as thick or thin as you want. It's totally up to you. You can use a different brush and make different marks. These are all marks that I like to make that I have come up with over time of playing. And experimenting. That was a lot of paint. There, I like that. Use my brush, and then I'm going to use a round brush to make these little circled shapes. You also make rectangles or lines. Um, I just chose to do circles today. I'm going to use a round brush. This is a size three. Um, you can use any round brush. Any round brush will work to make dots. So I'm going to use the purple. And again, I'm just going to make an uneven pattern. These do not need to be perfect circles. The more wonky they are, the more you they are. That's what makes them interesting. A bunch of perfect circles are kind of boring. Or like I said, you could make rectangles here using a flat brush. How are we doing on time? We're about five minutes over, but that's perfectly fine. Just take your time. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. An hour goes by really, really fast. So let me guys let me know if you guys have any questions since we're running over. Go ahead and ask away while I'm finishing these little dots.
Okay. And I'm done. All finished. Now, so I want to see everybody's projects. So make sure you follow me on Instagram and tag me. Um, this is my website. And make sure you tag at Michael Stores and tag your um, finished pieces with Make It With Michael's and Michael's classes. That way Michael's will find your pieces and um, I will be able to find them and we can highlight them. But I definitely tag me so that I can see what everybody did. Great. Are there any questions before we end? I don't see any questions, but there's a lot of thanks in the chat. People really okay. enjoyed Okay, well, class. you're welcome. Thanks so much for joining me. It's super fun. Sorry we went a little over. All right. I guess that's it. Bye, guys. Thanks so much.